Hi everyone! <laughs> I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And I'm here with your live paper crafting class here on May 3rd, 2023 at 11 a.m. Central Time. That's the live time, so if you're watching, say, an hour or more after that, then you're probably watching the recording. But chime in either way. Um, log in uh, and make a comment. Let us know where you're from. Say hello. Um, give us some helpful tips that you have. That sort of thing. We love it. It's it's a fun community. I hope that you hang out with us each week. I do go live pretty much each and every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. There are exceptions. For example, I'm going to be going on a trip soon towards the end of May. And so there will be a couple times where it won't be live. But um, that happens every once in a while. Uh, for now, we're live. I hope you're having fun already because we're going to dive into some color. We're going to enjoy some new products from the 2023 through 24 annual catalog that just debuted yesterday. And um, I've got for you uh, a fun project that I think that you're going to enjoy. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, for a beginning crafter, you'll want to invest in a die cutting machine though um, because it allows you to do this type of a card. But the overall effect, um, after you, you know, invest in these simple supplies, you're gonna love it and you're gonna fall in love with paper crafting if you aren't already, <laughs> okay? So welcome, welcome. So, yes, tell me where you're from. Tell me about the weather. I am wearing Berry Burst. Thank you, Jeanette. I saw Jeanette's comment about my color um, or that my top. It's a sleeveless because it's starting to get warm. In fact, today is probably the and I keep saying this because there was a day in April where we had a really nice, well, it was like three days in a row where we had like 80 degree temperature and stuff. But we, I live in Minnesota. So it's April is one of those where like we got big snow on April 1st and then we had big snow at the end of April. And in between it was, it was really weird. It was a weird month. I'm hoping that May will bring some May flowers. Okay, so what do I want to tell you? Let's say hello to Trisha Josephs and also to Lisa Marshall. So I'm broadcasting live on both YouTube and Facebook and they are my moderators. They're there to answer questions. Um, so reach out to them if you have a question. You can, I think you can tag Lisa just by typing in her name. I don't know. Um, I don't know how it works on Facebook. So Lisa, you're gonna have to tell me. Um, but then on YouTube, I know that you have to put the at sign first. So you start typing with the A with the circle around it and then you start typing typing immediately Trisha's name after that A with a circle around it and it will allow you to tag her. You can click on her name, Trisha Josephs and Lisa Marshall. So thank you and welcome gals and um, welcome to all of you again. Let's see what else do I want to tell you. We're going to have a prize drawing. So if you comment, you get entered into the prize drawing. That's the way it works. Easy, right? And I think we'll move on to the supplies and measurements that you'll need. So when I bring you over to my computer, I'm going to show you this PDF sheet. Oh, hang on a minute. We got to get our computer linked. Um, I'm going to show you this PDF sheet that you will be able to access. And you can access it from, let's see if I can do this here. Sorry, multitasking again. Um, I think this is it. <laughs> yes, we got it. You'll be able to access this PDF from my blog post, which will go live at 5 p.m. Central Time. So six hours after this video, you'll be able to go to my website. And there's a link in the description of the video on YouTube. I'll add it to the description of the, of the video on, on Facebook afterwards. Um, but you'll be able to access this. You'll be able to download it. So don't worry about taking a screenshot or anything. You do see photos of a couple of the cards that I'm going to share. Um, measurements are on there, the supply list and... Pretty much everything is clickable um, and then the title and the date so you can print these things off and accumulate them and over time you'll have this notebook full of um, reference sheets to the projects that I share. Let's see what do I want to point out. Can you see the fun backgrounds you guys? This is going to be amazing. So we're taking these dies. They're called the Countryside Corners dies and they're from the Countryside in suite one of the new suites in our catalog and um, in fact that's what we're featuring in all of our blog posts because i'm connected to a bunch of other people's blog posts from our all-star group today and so you'll be able to hop from blog to blog by clicking on everyone's names and seeing what they made with the countryside in suite 
I'm focused on the countryside corners dies. Pretty much that's the only thing I'm using from the suite. But I am in love with these dies and you just have to, you have to get the suite, but you definitely have to get these corners. Um, layering dies, I should call them. What else do I want to tell you? Um, the measurements are sort of uh, general this time. They're not real specific because I want you to choose the colors that you love. Um, so if the colors that I'm sharing with you today don't float your boat, then you can totally choose like all soft subtles. Um, all, do you guys remember those names? Rich Regals. Um, sorry, you can choose Regals, you can choose Subtles, you can choose the new in colors. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Oh, I've only got Imperial measurements up there, but you can, you can adapt this to metric, uh, the A4 size cardstock easily. In fact, these dies probably fit on the A4 cardstock better than they do on letter. So um, just, it's really just the base of the cardstock, folded in half, um, is what you got. So it's easy. Uh, I think that's it. We'll move back. In fact, we'll go to our desktop and I'm going to show you the catalog. This is what the catalog looks like. We can open it up now as of May 2nd. Let me find the beautiful suite. Um, in fact, I probably don't have it memorized. So hang on a minute. Countryside in there it is 62 and 63. Yes, I do have tabs on things that I still want to buy. This is the um, Countryside in Suite. You can see that we've got a stamp set here. It's hard to tell that that's a stamp set, but it's just showing you the layering dies with the stamp set. So the stamp set alone is basically a bunch of frame images that will coordinate with those dies. And you can pair them together and get the bundle and save 10%. Um, the dies, uh, I'll show you those in a minute, but here's one of them. <laughs> and then there's papers, really pretty blues on the on the papers in this suite. And one other thing is the embossing folder. In the US right now, that embossing folder is currently unavailable. <clears throat> I guess we all loved it as demonstrators and everyone bought one during pre-order time. Sorry about that. But we will fill that and, and um, have those back soon, I'm sure. Um, okay, so let's see the dies now. So these are the cool dies that you get. Again, again, Countryside Corners dies. Let me zoom in. You can see that they are layering dies. They layer, when you cut them out, the, the pieces layer onto each other. Okay, so for example, let me grab one. Here, I've already cut a couple of them. So this is the largest one. This is one of the smallest one, and they layer. And that's the idea of them, right? I'm going to show you something different with them though, but let me also introduce you to this really cool stamp set made by Irene Wentland. I think that's how you say your name, last name, Irene. Sorry, I met you and I, I've, I know you now and I can't pronounce your last name very well. I'm sorry if I said it wrong, but crafting with you, um, she is the million dollar sales achiever and got to help design this stamp set. So yay, Irene. Um, she's from Germany. And um, I got to spend time with her on the Million Dollar Achiever Retreat. So that was really cool. I got to know her that way. And this is hers. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Look at, we have all kinds of crafting on here. But we do have a stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we have like a heart that could be cut out of paper. Some great sentiments with it. The dies. I'm in love with these dies. This one here makes the scissors. This one here makes the paper trimmer. So you've got the die cut emboss machine, the trimmer, the snips. It's really cool. And then I've also used um, these guys here to make um, spools of twine, but they could be spools of embroidery floss, that sort of thing. Oh, there's a ruler. So fun. So fun. So I'm going to keep these set aside and I'm going to first pull out one of our largest dies. Now, the piece, the cardstock size piece that you could probably do with this, because I just told you scrap on the, um, on the direction sheet, the PDF, but you could probably go as short as five and a, yeah, probably five and a quarter. And then I think this, yeah, three and three quarters. So five and a quarter by three and three quarters is what you could use for cutting this out if you wanted to save lots of cardstock. I've just got this piece that was already sort of cut to size. So let's just grab our stamp and cut and emboss machine and zoom out just a tad so you can see better. And we're going to die cut just the base of it. So we've got our base plate, 
our die adapter layer. I'll put this on one side of my trimmer. I'm going to go ahead and add my cutting mat and then my paper and my die. Now a little tip for you is when you're putting these into your machine, you're going to crank this. There's a handle here on the side. Um, when you crank this handle and this goes in, if you have a straight edge going straight into your, your machine, it's going to make kind of a jumping sound and a crackle sound. And it's going to be a little bit easier if, I mean, you're still going to hear the crackle sound, but if you can angle it, you're going to get a much easier and smoother result. So I'm going to lay this in here, press this down on top. If you need to, you can use post-it notes or sticky notes in order to hold it still. And I don't think I aimed that in straight. Hang on. Okay. So now, oh yes, much smoother. So we're guiding this in and we've got our cut layer. This is just from regular basic white cardstock. Good morning to all of you. I, I love this. I keep seeing these great conversations going on. Um, tell, some of you are telling me about um, the weather compared to last month too. That's, that's fun. Uh, Cause I did, right? <laughs> okay. So this is regular white cardstock. This is, oops, here it is. This is a, the thicker, we have two kinds. And I recommend for, um, just for ease, just to use your thinner stuff for layers on your cards and your thicker stuff for your base of your cards. So we, I did put both in there, but you don't have to, you can use one or the other for either. I'm gonna set that aside. And now um, let's concentrate on some other little pieces before we set up our layering dies. So remember I told you I wanted to die cut these pieces here. This is the scissors or the paper snips is what we call it in Stampin' Up! World. And then this is the trimmer. It's so cute. It's like a squatty little trimmer. So I'm going to grab some scraps here. So I've already cut out my snips in silver. That's our silver foil. And I'm going to do it again in black. So I'm going to set that on there and I'm going to color. I'm going to cut this one in our pebbled path color like that. There we go. Pebbled path is one of our new in colors, 2023 through 25 in colors. And it's, I swear it looks the closest to the trimmer color that we have on our paper trimmer. Okay. We've cranked that and we now have cut our paper trimmer and our snips. So let me grab the scraps out of there. I'll just keep these upside down for a minute. You'll also want to use colors like crumb cake for the trimmer. Um, vellum will be good for the trimmer. White for the trimmer. And then for the paper snips. Oh yeah, I already told you about the, um, the silver. Okay, so let's set the scraps back here because we don't need them. And let's move this aside just for now. Okay, here we have our trimmer. I'm going to take my take your pick tool, zoom in a bit here. So do you see this little guy here? That I accidentally threw away the first time. That little piece there, if you compare it to our trimmer, are suppo they're supposed to be these guys. So that's, it's got a little score line through it. Really cute. <laughs> and then all of these pieces, we're gonna push through, push, in, push out of our die here. Let's see if we can do it. There we go. So there's a piece that you think you, another piece that you think you'd wanna discard, but for the version of the trimmer that I'm gonna make for you, I want you to keep it and it's the one that's right here. It's really thin and small. It is the piece that comes out of this section here. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in even more. It is adorable, I agree with you. I love this bundle. Okay, now let's poke out all these pieces. Get those separated. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we have our snips. That, these little guys here we don't need. Those are from the snips. So we'll push those out in a way. We have our silver snips. And we have 
a couple other layers. We have a white layer, we have a vellum layer, and we have just a tiny little piece from our crumb cake layer. Oh, you guys can't see that. Hang on, because I zoomed in so far that I'm not even in the middle of my... There we, there we go. Does that work? Okay. All right, next, let's grab our tidying up as we go here. We're going to grab our paper snips, our paper snips, not those, but my other ones. Here they are. And my multi-purpose liquid glue, which I've transferred into the fine tip bottle. And um, we're going to cut and paste. So let's, let's create scissors, you guys. So on the scissors, you can see that they're kind of angled that way. So when I cut, I'm going to try to cut that way as well. And I'm cutting just the black. And then what I'm going to do, oops, don't want to throw away that piece. That one I want to keep here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and glue these pieces to the silver so that we don't see any silver behind the actual black part. A tweezers might help, Rachel. I know, except I have fingernails that really can grab onto tiny little things. Sorry, yes, if you guys want to, you can use tweezers. Rachel does not. <laughs> and I should maybe, I don't know. Right now, my hands um, work with these. That's okay. All right, flip it over, do it again. But yes, we have these excellent tweezers actually in our um, embossing tools kit. These are the kind that you push here and then you let go and it can grab onto your paper. Let's just see if Rachel can make it work. <laughs> All right, so we're going to attach. We're going to let go. See? Rachel just get in the habit of using it and then people will see how to use tweezers. True. Okay, so I've got my scissors halves. Next, I'm going to poke a hole. So this is the way the scissors go together, like this. Do you see that? They're so cute, you guys. So I have the one with the um, hole on top and the one without the hole on the bottom. And I'm going to lay them next to each other like this. And then I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool. In fact, I could even line them up so that they're closed. Let's close your scissors, Rachel. Okay, so I've got my scissors closed and I'm going to poke a hole right where the hole of this scissors meet, uh, connects, right? We've got a hole there and now I'm going to take my round and square brads and grab a black one. If I can, maybe grab your, your, your snip or your tweezers to get that. There we go. <laughs> okay, um, one thing that I forgot to mention in the uh, list of supplies is if you're going to do this same kind of thing where you connect them with uh, a brad, that you have a, a scissors that can cut through metal. I mean, it's really thin metal. Otherwise, what you can do is take this guy, which is cut from the black paper, and you can just insert that into the hole. Um, or you could have the silver one, for that matter, if you really want to make it look just like our snips. But I've got my black brad, and I just kind of widen the legs of the, the brad. I call them legs. I don't know why. And that's going to allow me, when I poke them through, to spread them and widen them out. So now I've connected my two pieces. I'm going to flip my scissors over, place it down, widen these two prongs. We'll call them prongs. And we'll go like that. And then I like to just take like a clear block and press. And that'll help to uh, connect them better. Hang on a minute. Let's do that again. There. Now it's nice and flat. And our scissors can cut. <laughs> Aren't they? I love them too, Amy. She goes, they're adorable. They're fun dies to play with. If you like miniatures of anything, this is a die set you have to get and just play around with. So let's do another miniature and then we'll get to working on the layering dies. So for this one, I'm going to use the base 
um, as the, this is going to be my base here, and I'm going to cut along the score line to remove this white section. And hey, you can get more detailed on this, but I'm just going to remove these two white sections here. And then I'm going to flip them over, add glue to them. Again, this is the multi-purpose liquid glue in a fine tip bottle. It just allows me to get a tiny, tiny thin line instead of a thick one. Okay, and we'll press that down into place there. And this one. <laughs> oh, Rachel, I'm starting. Okay, I'm loving this, you guys. I need to start using my tweezers more. That's going to go into place there. Now we're going to put this back. We're going to stick that back in there. Oh, you know what? Not yet. Not yet. Are we? Nope. We're removing something else. Oh, gosh. Oh, you know what? I forgot. We're going to actually add this white, too. We're adding this white. You're adding the whole middle section. I forgot about that. I changed my mind after I made it the first time. Yeah, you can basically just cut off the top and bottom and then add the white. And I'm adding it now because it's going to be quicker than adding these two separate pieces after they're separated here. <laughs> okay, so that whole white section goes across. Okay, then we're going to stick this piece back in place and we're going to use tape, just regular tape, or you can use like our tear and tape and just put a bit on the back to hold that. And now you can see the dark on that section of the, of the trimmer. Okay, these guys, oh yeah, our vellum. We need our vellum one. Here's our vellum one. Our vellum one is going to act as the, the part that comes down on the trimmer. So we're going to remove that middle section that comes out. And we're going to cut, and I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. <clears throat> We're going to cut a little bit in so that you have a curve on the top right. And then this one is just going to go straight. Okay, and then on the bottom, <clears throat> we're going to do a little curve and in. And then cut straight. And we are going to add two little tiny drops of glue. So one here. And I think it looks best because you can see the adhesive. I think it looks best if you put it in those two areas rather than in the middle. We'll connect it down like so. And then we'll add these guys. <laughs> Aren't you loving it? Isn't this fun? Okay, so this one I'm just going to have up and away on this dot of glue. It's over the top of our glue that we had already in there from, ooh, we got a little hairy vellum piece there. Okay, so we already had a glue drop under there. Grab your take your pick tool. Make sure that the line is going horizontal on this piece here, because that's the way it looks on a real trimmer. Set it down, kind of shove it in place before it dries. Okay, there's our scoring blade. And if this glue dot down, or this little drop of glue down here bugs you, you could do the same thing, but it didn't bug me. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue right there. Stick it onto the end of my take your pick tool again, and put it right into that spot. Again, making sure it's horizontal, isn't that cute? O-M-G. That stands for, oh my gosh. Okay, and then we've already got a ruler cut. <laughs> We're having fun. Scissors. Oh my goodness, Rachel's in heaven. We're just having a fun time here. Um, there are other die cuts, by the way, that you'll want to check out in that collection. This here is, I don't do embroidery myself, but look at the cute embroidery hoop that you can make. And then you could stamp on it to make an image. Oh, so many cute things. Let's move these aside, let them dry a little bit. And we're gonna do this next. So we're gonna take 
our dies. Now we've already done our base piece. Oh, gosh, I'm close. Um, we've already done our base piece with this die. You can see that they do start to have a little bit of a curve to them. So just straighten them out again. There we go. Um, and so now after we've done our base piece, you see what we're doing here? We're going to connect all of these. And I think post-it tape is a great tool to use for doing that. We want to make sure that it fits the, the width of our dies. So we're going to stick one side down and the other side. And if you're going to do one card, you might as well do six. <laughs> All right. So here, we've got those on there. They're connected to our die. The next step is, and we're up, we have our die upside down. This is the cutting side up, okay? So cutting side up again, we're now going to, as carefully as possible, make these dies layer within so that they look super even all the way around. Do not worry if your tape is even, your post-it tape. That does not matter. As long as you have a couple pieces there. In fact, you can put even more pieces on if you want to. But we want to also be able to take our dies out of there so you don't want the whole thing taped. Otherwise, you're going to have to turn it upside down every time. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So we're going to keep on going here, trying to keep everything looking evenly spaced. Because once I die cut one, I have to do six colors with this. Or if you were going to just, OK, let's say you wanted just to, you know, instead of having six colors in here, you could do two or three. So then you'd only have to die cut three times. But you want to die cut, if you're going to do six colors, you want to die cut six times. Okay, because otherwise you have wasted pieces, I guess, is what I was going to say. You're going to have leftovers. This one you can certainly do too. I'm not choosing to do that. I just have these. Another thing to check is taking your ruler and seeing if the cut is matching up with the cut over here. And I know that mine is not because I went kind of fast. Yep, they're kind of like a six, uh, 30 second of an inch off. But um, that's okay. That's okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to trim with our paper snips. We're going to trim. Um, we don't want to trim too much because we don't want to let go of this, but we're going to trim to there. Turn it over. This will just allow us to get it out of our cardstock easier if we don't have extra ends. Okay, and then we're going to mark it. So you can mark it just with a pencil and you can say, um, up, down, whatever. And just when you when you die cut, you're going to lay your dies in the same direction every time. Uh, and so I have on the back table area here. Now, I don't know if you can see. In fact, here, we're going to do this. Oh, yeah, you can see behind me. So I have on the back table behind me my layering dies, and they're all positioned in the same direction. So I cut it out, cut it out, cut it out. Oh, you can't see. Hang on a minute. I, I'm showing myself, but I'm not showing you. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see. So here they are on my table. And every time I cut, I made sure that I laid them down in the same direction because it's going to be a lot easier for me to lift them up and fit them back together. Okay. Yes, you might as well do more than one, right? Just always do multiples. Whenever you make one card, make at least two. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so for this step, we're going to take our cardstock and we're going to lay it. Oh, <laughs> again, I'm not showing you what I'm doing. <laughs> there. There we go, Rachel. You're just so excited about this. I know. Okay, so let's go back to our paper, our paper die cutting tool, our stamp and cut and emboss. And we will put our plate number one, or sorry, sorry, base number one, die adapter number two, plate three. I lost a plate. Oh, here it is. Then our paper, then our dies, and you're going to kind of give them a little bit of a rotation here. Again, I'm using scraps up, so don't judge the fact that I have a bit of extra cardstock on the edges. Yes, I'm wasting a little bit, just a little bit, but that's okay. Am I going to get that in there all the way? I have a feeling it's not straight. Hang on. Okay. 
So we're going to crank and crank and crank and crank. When we take them out, some of them, sometimes they start to just fall out for you, but these did not. And I'm not going to do more than one of these, but again, you'll want to take and just, this is the reason why you don't want to have multiple layers of tape going all the way across because you need a place to use your fingers to poke everything out. So I just kept them in the same position every time I cut with the arrow and the die spaced in the same way. Okay. Now I'm going to keep these together this way because I'll want to do some more cards. I don't want to have just a lemon lime twist card. This is lemon lime twist. It's a returning color and it's so pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and put this over here in the same direction as my dies. And I'm going to bring over all of these goodies. So you can see the next step. Remember that I told you that the A4 cardstock, it fits these dies a little bit better. So there's a little bit of a narrowness, a narrowness to the dies. Okay, so there we go. There's a little bit of a narrowness to them. They, um, let me here, let me, let's just do this. Let's take our base card stock. Let's prepare it for our base of our card stock. And I'm using letter size paper. I'm cutting at five and a half inches because that's half of 11. And then I'm going to score through the middle, just like it said on that PDF sheet that you can print out later on at four and a quarter. So half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So here, I've just cut it in half and folded it in half. And this is my base. But if you remember, I said that the A4 cards are narrower, right? And they fit these better. So you can see that these designs here are meant for a skinnier and taller kind of card if you want to have an even spacing all the way around. So what I did on my first card that I made, and I thought this was kind of fun, let me just I'm gonna give this a good crease off the camera. Sorry about that. I wanted it to flatten out. Um, for what I did on my first card is I cut off some excess cardstock on it. I cut off, I believe, about three eighths of an inch. So, but I'm not gonna do it yet. I wanna, well, I could. Let's do it now. Three eighths of an inch. Let's do it now because then we don't have to trim later on. Sometimes it's easier to trim before. So three eighths of an inch I cut off on the card so it's a bit narrower, but to make it fit our basic white envelopes better, my sentiment piece came off the edge just for some fun, right? So let's put together that card. Um, let, we need a base. So here's our base. And then we just start grabbing colors. And for our colors, I think I'm going to grab Berry Burst. And we'll just take and turn this over and grab our glue. My desk is a mess. <laughs> Everything got everywhere, you guys. Okay, this first one, again, it doesn't matter because it's gonna fit the outside frame. Sorry, are you seeing what I'm doing? No. Um, it's gonna fit the outside frame just fine. It's the cuts within that we wanna keep all our dies in the same direction for. So we'll just lay this on here, make sure it's nice and straight, and that it's covering up all the white. What if it doesn't cover up all the white, Rachel? Well, do you see this? You can see just a slight amount of white there. If, you, if your paper dries beforehand and that happens, then you'll wanna just make sure that your base of your card is white and it'll blend right in. So if you have a black base or a blue base or whatever, use whatever color you're using on the base of your card for this piece, just in case you have that extra edge. All right, so I've got my berry burst done. I'm gonna set these back on my desk, going in the same direction so I don't mess up. The next color that I'm choosing is Fresh Freesia. And Fresh Freesia, I'm gonna use this piece for. So let me set these aside. I am going to use these. All of these little frames here are going to become um, swap bases for a different card that I'm making later on for my swap cards that I'm doing. I think I flipped this over and forgot which direction I did it in. <laughs> I want to say I did it this way, but who knows? Hopefully it'll fit. OK, 
Okay, so that's going to go there. Yay. And the next one is the blue. So let's take and flip that over. I think Rachel's just going to flip in the same direction consistently every time. <laughs> There's a little bit of thinking, a little bit of um, organization that is involved in this one. It's a mathematical card too. Did you guys notice that? A messy desk is a sign of a what? I missed that comment. I'm going to go scroll back. I'm sure it meant you're creative, but I will have to say that I am a clean desk person and I feel creative. <laughs> but yes, um, if it makes you feel better to say that, you can. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that that's true. Actually, I think um, a lot of people who are artistic are not the neatest, cleanest people. Um, I think they tend to be messier. Okay, this is the color I'm going to do next. I'm going to grab that. So I'm only assembling one card, but I had to show you the elements of both cards. And then, because um, because once I do one and I give you tips for the second one, I'm sure you'll be able to do it. See, they fit together perfectly because I'm keeping them all in the same direction. That is key. I did not do that the first time around. <laughs> And it was tough to keep twisting them back and forth and trying to figure out which one goes next. Okay, so it's this one next. We always learn from our mistakes, right? That's why it's okay for kids to make mistakes and we have to keep telling them that. I'm a former teacher. <laughs> it's okay. And then the last one is the lemon lime twist color. Again, you can choose a whole different color combination. You can just do, say, two colors, and then you only have to die cut twice because um, you can layer back and forth alternating the colors. You can do three colors, um, but six is divisible by two and three. So if you're going to um, choose any number, I guess I'd go with six, three, or two just for um, a mathematical look. Okay, so we have that done. The next step is to bring back our trimmer. And we're going to trim this whole thing all at once. <laughs> and I'm going to go from this corner up here to this corner here. But you're going to notice that the other corners of the layers within do not line up. It's okay. See? These corn it didn't cut with those corners. It's okay. You might have a totally different layering set of dies where it does that just fine, but these are not um, symmetrical in every direction. So if you like more math words, there you go. Okay, and then we're gonna go this way, and I'm gonna cut corner to corner this way. And then I'm gonna, and I'm keeping the whole thing together as I do this, you guys. I think it's a little bit easier. And now I'm gonna cut down the middle and in this case, I have to kind of eyeball. I could take my ruler out too. But I want to make sure that my connection in the middle here, where they're cut, is seen right in the middle of the channel of my trimmer. And that the top and bottom and the sides are parallel to those lines. I think we're in a good spot here. Keep everything firm as you go. We did it. I had a nice sharp blade too. If you don't have a sharp blade, you will not want to push into corners like I did here. You see that? It worked though because I just changed out my blade. Okay, keep all the pieces in the same order. Transfer them to your desk. And let's make this work. Okay, I would say take some tape first, just a little bit, and lay out your design. And I think I had mine about an eighth of an inch away. I'm seriously just a tiny bit on each piece because if you assemble this puzzle and it's off a little bit, you're going to you're going to get bugged by it. Or I would. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't. I would. But yeah. Oh, come on, seal. There we go. I have it about an eighth of an inch away from the top and bottom. I have it about an eighth of an inch away on the sides. And once I get these pieces on, this is what you do on a lot of card making um, layouts, uh, especially like if you're adding three pieces to the front of a card and you want to get them even. Just stick them on 
with a tiny bit of adhesive first and then play around with it, then jiggle it, then move it. Alrighty. See, I think I wanted to bring these down more than I had up. Yep, this will work. So then you just take off one piece at a time. And I would say glue, because we have corners, would probably be your best option for adding them. Oh, you guys, this is so fun. <laughs> Everyone's got to get the um, countryside in corner or the countryside corners dies now, don't you? Okay, I think I got, oh, it's a little off. It's a little off. Quick, move it before it dries. That's the joy of glue, too. You can shimmy it. It dries really quick, but there's a little bit of leeway. The other, um, the other cards that I made, because I have two others to share with you. Hang on a minute. I have two others to share with you, and one of them I cut down the middle but then I cut it straight across. And that's the second card that you saw in the photo on the PDF. That one I love too. Um, that one I love because it uses the dies in a completely different way. And it makes you go, wow, those are the corner side uh, or the country, countryside corners dies um, because they're just, you can't really tell. They're kind of cool. They're just laid out differently. Um, and this one, on these pieces here, these side ones, I would say look at the edge of your cardstock more so than where they connect to the corners. Is this my last one? <laughs> it is cool looking. Thank you. I didn't have a finished final one like this done, so sorry that we had to create it in front of you. Sometimes, sometimes lives can be a little, get a little tedious when you have stuff like this. Did I do the top ones yet? I did. Okay. Oh, there we go. I'm like, oh, did I do it upside down? <laughs> okay, so. Um, oh, and I want to point out too. So when you, when you start layering your colors, you can get different combinations depending on how you put them together. Or you could even use just certain colors, you know? Like you don't have to use all six of them. So after that's done, we're going to grab this piece and we're going to stamp on it with our Tuxedo Memento Black. I need a block. And my stamp from the stamp set. Life is better. What does it say? Life is better when you're crafting. Well, don't we know it? So ink that up, grab that stamp, that stamp and pierce mat again, just because it's better to stamp with photopolymer onto a cushy surface. So we'll stamp this down. I'm going to go off to the right just slightly, and I'm looking at my words, is better when you're, and I think I got it pretty parallel. It's hard to stamp at an angle. Try it. It's true. We're going to add this with dimensionals, and I know they're here. So we'll add, just add a couple, and I'm going to add one towards the top left, one towards the bottom right, and maybe a couple through here. I don't know why. Oh, I know why. Because, um, <laughs> oh, I don't want to add one here. Um, I added them in that way because I wanted space here for that brad. So now what we do is we bring in that envelope again. We lay the card on top of the envelope as a guide and we lay this down on here like that. So cool. So it's going to fit in the envelope but it has that little tab that sticks out for fun. And now we'll take our glue and we're going to add just a little bit behind here, not up into the handle, just right through that top layer. Not this layer here, but just through that section that's closest to the back and not on the handle part. We're going to connect it like that. And this is the best part. Your scissors can move on your card if you do it that way. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love this. Okay, we need a uh, we need a rhinestone because Rachel needs glitz on her cards. Besides the silver on the paper snips, let's just grab one of these little tiny cute ones here and let's add it to the where did I put it? Crafting. The eye of the word crafting. I didn't do anything fancy on the inside of the cards, sorry, but yeah, scissors, cutting scissors cards. Oh, they're so cute. So there's that. This is the other card that I did that I'm totally in love with. Um, the sentiment comes from this set, uh, You Inspire Me, and I dotted the eye, the first eye over here with the silver because of the silver ruler. And then we've got the paper trimmer and oh my goodness, stinking cute, right? <laughs> oh, and this is the way the dies went on. So again, I cut it in half, cut it in half again, and then I turned every piece the opposite direction so that the corners fit in there. I, I just thought that was fun. So that's the second card style. And then this is the third one. I'm not as excited about it, but maybe you guys are okay with it. I don't know. I have it photographed. It's in the blog post. Um, maybe because it doesn't have anything paper crafting wise. It has the basket that holds the spools of embroidery thread or whatever. But I, when I first made these, I was thinking ribbon <laughs> or twine, something that you use on cards. And I just simply cut that one down the middle three times or down the middle and then on the two sides a couple times following where these two colors separated instead of the corners. Okay, so I followed where they separated and then I spread them out so that they would have an even border all the way around. These two cards both have the full letter card base size on them. But if you're using A4, again, you could do whatever. Just flip that one there. Okay, actually here, we'll just do all three like that so you can see them. Fun, right? We have prizes to draw. Prizes, prizes, prizes. Today, um, for, and I'm thinking of beginning crafters, but anybody can use these. We have packs of note cards and envelopes uh, as the prize. So that it comes with 20 cards, matching envelopes, 20 envelopes. They're already scored. So if you want to not worry about your white base, you can you know, use note cards, make a smaller size, do something else with them. Just do something fun with some card bases, basically. I hope you can use them. They do not relate to this size because this, is, this size is, is larger, but that's the prize that we're drawing today. And the prize from last week, because we have after live winners, is choice between the red rhinestone basic jewels and a sheet of regular dimensionals or regular dimensionals and the sprig trinkets. So these are these are the sprig trinkets. Very fun, right? Aren't they cute? They're pretty. You can make earrings, jewelry from them. So I'm going to show you the winners from the after live. We're going to go to my computer and we will pull that up so you can see on Facebook. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Oh, and then you're seeing my messy desk. So hang on, I'm going to adjust something here. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, so the winner from Facebook, uh, from the after live on Facebook is uh, Barbara Jones. It may have been during the live too. Um, but Barbara Jones, congratulations, you are the winner for um, last week's video after live commenters. You can choose from the sprig trinkets or the red rhinestones, and then you get a sheet of dimensionals. Just reach out to me with your address so that I can mail it to you. If you live outside the US, by the way, um, I can mail you a um, tutorial. Um, so a $15 tutorial of your choice. And then the winner from YouTube after live comments is Shirley Nicholson. So congratulations to both of you. Shirley Nicholson, again, make sure that you reach out to me at my email address, which is showing there. And then I'm going to bring you back to my desktop. Hang on. And I'm going to check the comments. Trisha did announce the live winners. We have Deborah Landau and Rosie Walker. Congratulations. I'm going to scroll through my comments to see if there it is. There it is. Yay. So there are the live winners, Deborah Landau and Rosie Walker. Deborah, I feel like you have been a winner before. And if you have, lucky you. Congratulations to you. 
<laughs> That's awesome. There are people who have won more than once. Okay, I need to find that comment again and unlink it, and that's gonna be a challenge for me. Oh my goodness sakes, where did it go? Okay, hang on, we're gonna scroll the other direction. <laughs> Otherwise, it's gonna be sitting on my head the whole time. Oh, Rachel, 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 it was there. See, this is why I need somebody in the studio with me. I'm gonna find it. Um, so, I wanna talk to you about some news, some Stampin' Up! news. In fact, I'll just move my head over. That'll help. Um, some Stampin' Up! Stampin Up news. We have some other things besides just new, there it is, some new catalog product that are available right now. We have um, the Boho Blue Mini Stamp and, and Cut and Emboss Machine. Remember that was um, uh, an extra little goodie that people could add to their starter kits during celebration at a very, very low price. I believe it was half off. You can purchase it at full price, 63 in the US, I think. Um, anyways, you can purchase that in the online. Oh, I did it again. Hang on. <laughs> and when you click on comments, they stay on the screen. I didn't mean to do that, sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. What was I saying? You can, you can purchase it because we had a surplus. Stampin' Up! had extras. So you can get in on that fun machine if you'd like to. It's in the online store. Also, there is a Spanish version of the stamp set. I have to show you this. This suite is really top-notch. It's my favorite. Um, it is called Earth and Elegance. It's on page 70. So I bring you to my desktop and you can see this suite here is available with a Spanish version of the stamp set. You can get the whole suite with Spanish words. You can get just the stamp set with Spanish words. So just keep that in mind. You can find that in the online store. Um, what else? There's a new kit in the online store. So uh, let's see if I can bring you to my computer and show you that. Um, I can, I can, I can, I can. So the new kit, let's go to menu, shop products, kits collection, shop all. The kits collection has a new kit that has this fun shaker card. It's confetti, confetti birthday. So that's available right now. Um, there's probably more. And oh, here's my notes. Oh, and then there's colored grid paper. I, saw, I think we saw that when we went back. So let me go back to the home page here. It's on one of these scrolly things. One more. One more. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we have some grid paper that you can purchase if you're interested in something a little bit different. I thought that was kind of cool. And it's in metric and imperial measurements. Um. I think that's it. So I uh, just wanted to mention again that uh, my all-star group is doing a blog hop today. It starts at 5 p.m. Central Time, which is now in a little over five hours. You can visit my blog post, which is linked to this video. When you click on it at 5 p.m. or later, you'll be able to see photos of the, of the uh, cards that I share. The video is gonna be linked in there. Measurements, you'll be able to download the PDF. And when you scroll towards the bottom, you can actually click on the names of the other hop participants and you'll be able to see the things that they made with the countryside in sweet. I tell you, you're going to see lots more blue than what I shared today because I'm sure that others are going to be using the papers. Th those papers are gorgeous. I use the papers and the dies on my exclusive project for our exclusive video class bundle tutorial that you can purchase for $15. Information's on the blog post about that too. But that's an exclusive thing that has video links for all the projects. And OMG, again, there's so many pretty projects and there. I think we all use the paper because it's gorgeous. Um, so you'll want to check that out as well. <laughs> Lynn likes the earth and elegance. She says, it's shouting to me. I, I had to buy it. In fact, I um, two day shipped my order, so it should be coming tomorrow. I'm pumped, I'm so excited. So tomorrow I'm gonna to be opening up my box and then our team is gonna see this box opening. I probably won't have time for a box opening um, publicly on my Facebook page like I've done in the past or on YouTube or whatever because I'm getting ready for a class and it's a lot of cutting. <laughs> so, so forgive me, but there are lots of demonstrators out there. So if you wanna see some new products, just Google box opening. Um, 23 through 24 annual catalog. I mean, you'll be able to see what people show, share with you. 
In fact, you might even be able to see some of those videos starting today because some people probably overnighted, not just two day ship, but might have overnighted their products. So enjoy. Um, we will see you next week. I'll be live again on Wednesday, May 10th, um, 2023 at 11 a.m. Just come back and visit and I'll have a new project to share with you. So I hope you all had fun. Thanks so much. Thank you to um, Lisa and Trisha for being moderators. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I love it when you um, support me in my business, of course, obviously. So let your friends know about it. Hopefully we'll have bigger parties in the future um, so that, uh, yeah, so that we can get more ideas from each other because the more people, the merrier always. Take care, everybody. And now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.